at Allison. Thanks so much. In the meantime, everybody has been digging out of the snow all day long. How's your back tonight? In fact, Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold went to a few neighborhoods where the Utah spirit of neighbor helping neighbor is alive and well. He joins us live tonight from West Valley City. Hey there, Chris. Well, yeah, good evening, Kelly and Bob. Yeah, real sense of community on full display in neighborhoods I visited today in both Kearns and right here in West Valley City. Now, while this snow has presented plenty of challenges, that didn't stop people from stepping in and stepping up to help one another. It might be a winter wonderland for some and even our furry four-legged friends. But for others, it meant a day trying to dig out of the snow. I'm 21 years old and my whole life this is like the worst by far. Hemma Bracare was hard at work. I like this technique because it's just a lot more simple. Helping clear the driveway at her grandpa's Kern's home. I don't know if they're going to go out, if they need anything, you know, their family, they're important. Over in West Valley City, the snow presented plenty of challenges for Deborah Mace. It's almost three feet deep in the back. I was stuck sitting, sitting in the snow and there was no leverage to be able to get myself out. Trying to find a maker a spot so she can have the cans back. Thankfully, she has some pretty good neighbors. <laughs> I had a text from her that says, um, I'm falling <laughs> and I can't get up. And so we threw on stuff and my son and I came running out and found her back there. And I said, are you OK? And the helping hand from Elizabeth Garfield didn't stop there. <laughs> Armed with a shovel. <sighs> She helped move some of the snow out of Mesa's driveway. It's my workout for the day. We've been out here then just trying to make sure that we can get as much of it done and they can get into the cars and things as possible. For Garfield? Bottom line is just be a good human. That's what we all should be doing. <laughs> no other way to put it. Something her neighbor appreciates. Try not to call Awesome. as much as you can because you don't want to abuse their generosity but on times like this it's just she should call more <laughs> whenever she needs now, whether it was neighbors helping, neighbors like you saw there with Garfield or Mace, or family members lending a helping hand to one another, everyone I spoke with out here today said they would be right back out here tomorrow doing the same thing if they need to. Now, when clearing the snow, making sure things like fire hydrants are visible is also pretty crucial. Ryan Love with the Unified Fire Authority says with this type of winter weather we've had, we've seen snow banks upwards of two to four feet, meaning they're probably covering up those fire hydrants. It's something he says poses a large threat to their firefighting efforts. Love says it's common courtesy and best practice for homeowners to make sure those hydrants are visible and accessible to firefighters in case of an emergency. Our fire department would like to see uh, residents or homeowners clear out their hydrant that's on their property up to four feet um, in diameter. Um, and that way it gives us access to the hydrant and just in case that there is a fire in that in your home or a business, uh, we're not wasting any time having to um, locate the hydrant, which is actually really hard sometimes to do um, if it's not marked properly and if the snow is, is banking on top of it. Well, during our last snowstorm, Love says Unified Fire Authority experimented to see how much time was saved during an emergency if a fire hydrant was cleared versus one that wasn't. He says that test showed they gained more than a minute if that fire hydrant was visible. Now, another thing Love mentioned when I spoke with him earlier today is that they've been responding to more carbon monoxide alarms going off during this storm than usual. Now, he urges people to really be mindful of that and clear the area around their ventilation system, saying about 350 people die in the U.S. on average every year from carbon monoxide poisoning. For now, live in West Valley City, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah.